Hi, this is Greg Shaw. I'm here to talk about how the Forward Open Source Project provides a 100% automated uh, conversion of Progress ABL applications into drop and replacement versions that are in Java. Um, and this is a source-to-source -source conversion technology, uh, which combined with uh, the forward runtime is uh, is what provides a fully compatible environment. Um, let me just quickly run this. Um, the first thing you'll note is that it is a batch process. You you launch it. I'm I'm using an ant build script to automate the execution of the what we call the conversion driver and also the build of it so at the end um, of the process and you see over here all the different um, artifacts that are being generated or they could be intermediate forms or, or outputs but um, we're, we're into the back end of the conversion already and now we're running Java C here um, to compile it we're jarring it up um, and then we're, we're running through a data migration as well. Overall, this, this is a small project. It took um, about 30 seconds to get done, or 41 seconds in this case with the data migration. Um, but you'll see, here's the build results. You'll see we're, we've generated a, a hotel.jar. We've got this little hotel application we've written. It's a demo app. Um, and you know we've got all of our class files and so forth. Um, if you know th this batch process is designed such that the result can be um, compiled and executed immediately so if I go ahead and start up a server process right now um, and then I'll I'm, I'm gonna run the client um, basically this is this is not running with open edge this is completely free of open edge this is all Java uh, you know the the result runs immediately. The result there's no hand editing. There's no post processing. This is totally different than any of the partial automation approaches. The so-called oh we'll get you ninety five percent of the way there. It's actually you know what they really do is is they get you five percent of the way there and then you spend years um, actually making the thing work, doing the real rewrite because the stubs and skeletons that they implement is are nearly worthless. Um, they don't work. They absolutely don't work out of the box. Ours does. Um, and we, we take the hard approach of automating 100%. Our approach was designed this way um, so that you can um, repeat this over and over again and constantly improve it and so we can handle larger and larger, more complicated applications over time, over the last 12 years we've been working on it, we now cover a huge amount of applications. Let me take you through very quickly the, the design um, at a high level and then we'll talk more about the implications of, of what we're doing. Um, so we take in Progress ABL source code uh, and you know, you'll see here .ps, we'll take in .ws, whatever the external procedures are named and all the includes. Again, they, they're normally or most commonly .i, but they can be named anything, like you know, .fs for a frame definitions or what have you. Um, we take in your schemata. I shouldn't have, <laughs> shouldn't have put that away. Here's our schemata, right, our DF files. Um, and by the way, uh, later on when we talk about the exported data, here are the .d files, which are the, you know, the export form of your data. So we take in your source code, your schemata, we pre-process it with a compatible preprocessor. We lex it and parse it, and we turn it into abstract syntax trees. Tree-structured forms without the syntactic sugar of your code and your schema. Um, the middle portion then operates on these trees and handles the schema conversion itself. We create the structure of your database and all the configuration of your tables and, and um, columns and your, your indexes and so forth in the DDL. And then we, we use Hibernate as an object to relational mapping layer that turns records in the database into ob data, you know, objects that your Java application uses and vice versa. That's, that's done with the open source project called Hibernate and we create the, both the, the configuration for Hibernate and the data model objects, which we've refactored or pulled out of your schema and pulled out of your source code in the case of temp tables. 
Um, so from there, the code backend will handle the source code conversion. So we again, we read the syntax trees, including the schema, and we operate in the data model in successive, you know, in, in a, this kind of very deeply pipelined process where we run through um, increasingly um, getting closer and closer to uh, the to Java semantically identical Java trees that match the progress trees logically, um, and then we anti parse those out into source code. And as part of this, we do refactor. So we refactor. We pull out all the besides the data model objects that we pulled out. We pulled out the static frame definitions. We pull out static menu definitions as their own classes, and then the rest of your program logic, including the flow of control for your program. Is in, is, is in its own class. Um, this is the code conversion here. Now, we, we designed that to run separately from the data backend because you may run the con code conversion one time, or actually I'll, I'll explain later why, why running it many times may be useful. But you'll take the resulting jars and after you're done testing and proving that they, they do in fact work exactly the same way as your original, the you know you'll want to implement or migrate your servers over and for each server you've got or each database instance you would be running the data back end taking the exported data creating the database structure with the ddl using the hibernate mappings and data model objects to import that data and and have a fully running rdbms okay so it's 100% automated. We can handle small projects like this one, but we, it's designed to handle big projects. Yes, it, it, instead of 30 seconds, it will take hours to handle 10 million lines of code. That's okay. But um, it runs as a batch either way. There's no hand editing. There's no post-processing. It compiles immediately. And because of the, our compatibility environment or framework for runtime compatibility, it runs immediately after, after you compile it. You can rerun it at any time, and there are reasons for doing this. Uh, one reason might be you you are making changes to the ABL code, and you want to pick those up. Um, so you just drop the new code in and rerun conversions. So you can make you can make changes in parallel while you're working on on converting over, or you can continue to develop in the ABL, and then and then just convert convert it and deploy it in Java if you like. Of course, we recommend shifting over development to pure Java when you're ready to do so, um, but there's no requirement that you, you shift over. Um, you can use this just purely as a deployment thing, at least you know, in the short term or in the long term. Um, we can also make, there, there are, uh, constantly, we're constantly improving the code, so you know, improving refactoring, improving the generated code, um, and you know, rerunning the, the conversion is a good, you know, to pick up those improvements is one reason why you might rerun. You can also do customizations. So you can customize things or integrate with some handwritten Java or third-party technology and then rerun the conversion and, and, and pick up the result. Um, so, you know, this is a very high leverage concept. It's, it's the whole point of this was such that we would write changes or write support for ABL features and build that support once and then, then leverage that across every app out there and convert hundreds or thousands of ABL apps over without having to do any manual work each time, the same manual work over and over again, slaving our lives for thousands of years of person years to try and rewrite all these millions and hundreds of millions of lines of code that are out there. That's, you know, we weren't going to do it that way. So we took a high leverage approach to doing it. It was the hard approach because it's taken us 12 years to get the coverage, but we, we support so much of the ABL right now. And the, the key thing that determines how much work your ABL app is going to take is, is whether the features, the ABL features are already supported or not. Now, we support so much of the language that, you know, it, it's, it's, very likely that that the vast majority, if not all, of your app is already supported. But if you do need that support, or if there are things that, that aren't supported, you can just remove them um, and code it a different way that is already supported. Or you can contribute changes back to forward and project for inclusion that, that adds that support. Or you can come to Golden Code and we'll do it for you. Uh, you know, 
Some features may just take hours or days. Larger features might take weeks or months, although most of the large features are now already in. So, um, But the, the bottom line is the amount of work necessary to support your app is largely dependent upon the ABL features that are in use. Um, we, we, we're very excited about this. We hope you are as well. Uh, this is multiple orders of magnitude less work, multiple orders of magnitude less risk than any other approach you could possibly take to, to moving. Um, this changes the economics of switching, um, all because of our extreme automation approach. Thank you for watching this video. Uh, you can find out more information uh, at beyondabl.com or subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos because we're, we're constantly creating new ones, or follow us on social media. Thanks again.